So I hope you enjoyed that last session. Um, but now you've had some practice in working out absolute pressures in salt water in the sea, in seawater, uh, we can now move on to questions where it's essential that you get that bit right. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I find Paddy questions a little bit confusing. Actually, I know I'm not alone. Uh, a few years ago, I was teaching a dyslexic guy to become a Paddy instructor, and he told me one day that he struggled to understand exactly what the questions were actually asking him. He often had to read and then reread questions a few times. And even when he'd gone over them a, few, a couple of times, he, he, by the time he got to the end of the question, he'd forgotten what was said at, at the start. Now, to be honest, as he's telling me his problems, as he's describing it to me, it all sounded really familiar to me. It's exactly what's happened to me many times before. Of course, him being dys dyslexic didn't help, of course, but it was clear that it's not the only cause of the problem. And I've met many people who tell me that they find Paddy wording confusing. Now, my wife, uh, she's a master instructor and she's told me exactly the same thing. She tells me that Paddy packs so much information into a question that by the time that she gets to the end of the question, she's lost track of exactly what it is that uh, is being asked of her. So even if you don't find Paddy questions confusing, even if you don't have a problem with it, you know that once you are an instructor, some of your students will definitely have a similar type of uh, issue. So what I've done is I've devised a really useful and a simple way to help with all of this. And I call it, I call it the box method. It's got loads of benefits, including being able to jot down important parts of the question as you go along. So take a look at this YouTube video. We put it out a few years ago. Lots of people have found it really useful. And then when you've watched it, we can have another little chat about it once, once you're ready. I can't do maths. I hear so often from people who are doing a dive master course, I can't do maths. And actually, I find that the people that say that, actually, they can do maths. The, the problem they have, though, is not doing maths, it's getting confused between two signs. And they're the two signs, the divide or multiply. And, and actually, once they've decided which sign to use, their mathematics are perfect. They get the sum they get the sum right, but they get the answer to the question wrong because they've decided to use the wrong sign. And this actually is easy. It's nothing to do with maths. It's the easy bit. It's the bit that you know about, the diving bit. Let me try and explain. Let's imagine that you and I were going to go diving together. So here I've got the surface of the water. Here I've got a shot line and you and I are going to go diving. Now let's think about what effects of pressure are we going to notice or that we know about. Well, first of all, I guess the first thing we're going to notice is that we need to clear our ears. The next thing we notice is that our BCD would need to be uh, equalised. We need to put some air in our BCD. And also we'll be aware that our suit is getting compressed, whether it's a dry suit or a wet suit. We know a few other things about um, diving as well, particularly if we're a nitrox diver. If we're a nitrox diver, uh, we're also aware that the oxygen in the tank that we breathe is, is, is more effective the deeper we go. Actually, this applies to the effects of all gases. So if there was uh, any carbon monoxide or some pollutant in our cylinder, the deeper we went, the more effective it would be on our body. Of course, there's something else that we know increases as well, which is density. And uh, we also know that uh, we breathe more underneath the water, don't we, as well? We, that, that, that's another thing. So if you think about it, we know these things. We don't need to be clever. We, open water divers know all this stuff. So, um, but here, underneath the division sign of getting things smaller, have a look at this list. Uh, ears, BCD, suit, they're all to do with air spaces, aren't they, that are going to get smaller, or a divide sign, smaller, as we go underneath the water. Actually, I've lumped them all together with a balloon, because a balloon is like an airspace. So this is all the same type of subject. Now, on this side, which is a greater symbol, a time sign, multiply, oxygen, effects of gases, density and breathing. We don't need to be a mathematician, we don't need to be a physicist to know that these, these get greater, these get smaller. And once you've decided which is the correct sign, then I tell you what, the mathematics are easy. Now, I've got a 
great way to show you how to do this. I call it the box method, but the best way to explain it is to, is to use an example of a typical question. So let's go with that, uh, and I'll show you how to use the box method. Works every time. Here is uh, a typical question. Uh, if a balloon has a volume of six litres at the surface, what would its volume be at 20 metres? Okay, now the first thing I urge you to do is get away from mathematics and just think about something you do know about. Will the balloon get bigger or smaller as you take it down? This is the crucial thing. And I think you'll know that it gets smaller, and the mathematical sign for smaller is division. So we've got that bit started. Now there's a golden rule with these boxes as well. The middle box is always going to be the absolute pressure. Okay, the absolute pressure. And in this question, the absolute pressure at 20 meters would be three, three atmospheres. So can you see by doing the box method, I, I, I can do this piece by piece. The box over here is the number that's in the question. In other words, it has a volume of six litres. Six goes in here. And now I can get my calculator out if I need to and work out the sum that I know is going to be correct. Six divided by three equals... So the volume of the balloon would be two litres at 20 metres. OK, let's try this with, uh, with another sample question. Okay, so let's look at this, another typical question that you might find on exams. If a whole cylinder of air will last 100 minutes at the surface, how long will it last at 40 metres? So the first thing, as always, uh, we're going to decide, will it last less or will it be longer? And we know as divers, it's going to be a lot less, isn't it? Less, the sign, the mathematical sign for less, will be a divide. So the next thing we need to do is put the absolute pressure in the middle box, 40 metres, we know that to be five atmospheres. And here the number from the question, 100 minutes, here. 100 divided by five, you can get your calculator out if you don't know that, and the answer would be 20. So the answer is 20 minutes, okay, so that cylinder of air will only last 20 minutes at, at 40 metres and it lasts 100 at the surface. So there we go. Let's take another type of question and we'll see the box method in use again. Okay, so another typical question, let's, let's read it through. If a cylinder contains 0.06% of carbon monoxide, what effect would it have on a diver if it was breathed at 30 metres? Now again, we need to put on our practical head, the bit that we're good at, and we do know that the effect of that gas underneath the water would be greater than at the surface. We, we know that. And if it's greater, we need the mathematical sign for greater, which would be multiply. Okay, so that's the times. The next golden rule, can you remember, in the middle, we're going to put the absolute pressure. And the absolute pressure at 30 metres is four atmospheres. So we put four in here. The number here is 0.06. Okay, so we can put 0 0.06. And again, you might need a calculator for this one, just to make sure that the decimal points get in the right place. But the answer to the question would be... Okay, so the answer to the question is that the effect that this carbon monoxide would have on the diver at 30 metres would be 0.24%. Again, the answer. Can you see how these boxes are making it much more simpler to get these uh, questions right? Let's have another go.
Okay, so I've abbreviated the question a little bit, but um, I think it's quite clear. If a nitrox cylinder has got a 34% oxygen mix, what is the partial pressure of oxygen at 27 metres? Okay, so once again, we know that the deeper we go, the more effect that oxygen will have on us. So we do know that it's going to be a multiplication sign. The next thing we're going to pop in there is the absolute pressure at 27 metres is 3.7 atmospheres. And in this box here, we're going to put the number 0.34, that's the percentage of oxygen. And you definitely need a calculator for this one, I would suggest, but you put those numbers in and uh, I've already worked it out, it's going to be 1.2 five eight actually nearly nearly 1.26 and we know that the maximum level of ppo2 would be 1.4 so this diver would be quite happy to go 34 percent mix of 27 meters nice easy way to work these out but let's take one last look at another example that you might find Okay, so let's just take a closer look at the question. If a balloon with a volume of 6 litres, when it's at 14 metres, so the balloon's already underneath the water, what would its volume be if we took it to 22 metres? Now, you've probably heard people giving you advice before that with a question like this, they tell you to, to take the balloon to the surface first. And those people have given you really good advice. That's exactly uh, what you need to do. So let's see how we can do that. In this question, we already have two different absolute pressures, which is why we've got two rows of boxes here. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is write down the absolute pressures. Now, the first one at 14 metres, I'm going to put here, would be uh, 2.4 atmospheres. And at 22 metres, it will be 3.2 atmospheres. The other thing I already know is that the, the number in the question, 6 litres, I can pop in here. So we've got quite a lot of the structure already here. Now we need to remember that this balloon needs to be taken to the surface. And we do know that if it goes to the surface, it's going to get bigger. So the mathematical sign that we're going to pop in here would be a times. And 6 times 2.4 would be 14.4. You can use a calculator to, um, to work that out. Uh, the 14.4 just transfers to this box here. And here now we've got to imagine that it's going to go back down underneath the water and it's going to get smaller. So the smaller mathematical sign will be here, division here. So 14.4 divided by 3.2, we're going to come up with the answer 4.5 litres. So that would be the answer to the question. The balloon, 6 litres at 14 metres, take it down to 22 metres, it will be 4.5. And once again, let's use our practical heads, the stuff that you already know about, if the balloon's already at 14 metres and we're going to take it to 22 metres, it's right, it will go from 6, it will be smaller, won't it? So if you've ended up with a larger number than 6 here, you know it's another indication you've got these two signs mixed up. Okay, so that's the box method. I need to tell you about some of the comments that I received on that YouTube video. It was up for quite a long time. Um, there was one person uh, that felt the need to tell me that when I wrote O2 on the board, I wrote the two, the small two in the wrong place. It should have been a bit lower down, I think he said, or maybe it was a bit higher up. I can't remember. Anyway, he told me. And another person told me that I didn't need to write 0 0.06 and call it 6% as technically it was the same thing. So if you noticed any of my errors, please accept my apologies. But in contrast uh, to those comments, so many other people express their thanks for helping them to put, they use the box method to pass their theory exams. So questions relating to pressure volume relationships are such a big part of Paddy Physics exams. Um, and we'll be talking about this a little bit more in the next video. But in the meantime, uh, I'm sure you're pleased to hear that there's some questions for you to answer in the next session. So I'll let you get on with those. Uh, good luck with them. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again in the next video.